Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Department of Agriculture has now implemented measures to control a disease affecting livestock and poultry in the province of Pampanga. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. The Department of Agriculture and the Bureau of Animal Industry have confirmed cases of avian influenza subtype H5 affecting poultry and livestock in some municipalities in Pampanga, thereby declaring an avian flu outbreak. In a press conference this afternoon, Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Pino said samples taken from a farm in Pampanga showed a positive result of the disease based on the test conducted by the Animal Disease Diagnosis and Reference Laboratory. Such H5 strain of the influenza virus in fowls can cause illness and deaths to both animals and humans. As a response, the Agriculture Department has implemented measures to control the spread of avian influenza. Cases of uh, avian influenza, while confirmed, uh, are still confined within the uh, uh, town of San Luis Pampanga. Uh, we have uh, instituted measures to prevent uh, the possible spread of the virus. Also, the department has put up one kilometer quarantine zone and seven kilometer control zone from the affected town of San Luis for surveillance. They also placed 12 quarantine checkpoints within one kilometer radius to check incoming and outgoing vehicles transporting livestock and poultry to the province. We have declared a uh, ban on the shipment of fowls from Luzon to other parts of the country. The Bureau of Animal Industry is also processing the samples that will be sent to World Organization for Animal Health for further testing. DA assures the public that the situation is under control and it's still safe to eat cooked poultry and its byproducts. The Department of Agriculture and Bureau of uh, Animal Industry is not unprepared for this crisis. They have long prepared for this. So this is not something that uh, uh, should cause us panic. Joyce Balancho, UNCV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, the provincial government of Pampanga has now declared a state of calamity and is set to slaughter more than 400,000 fowls in the town of San Luis. Joanano tells us why. The entire Pampanga province has been placed under a state of calamity as approved by the Sangguni Ampan Lalawigan. Policemen and agriculture authorities have imposed checks on all exit and entry points in at least 12 Pampanga towns to avoid the movement of poultry products going in and out of the southeastern municipalities of the province. The Department of Agriculture, meanwhile, is set to burn around 400,000 birds, specifically from six farms in San Luis, Pampanga. <laughs> Kasi ipapasunog ko nga eh. Kuhaan uh, yung uh, wild birds kasi di ba marami sa katapos wang dyan. So we're looking at uh, possible uh, spread to uh, smuggling of pecking ducks from China. The secretary assured there is no reported case of human transmission of the virus so far. However, the Department of Health advises the public to take flu precautions and avoid getting near fowl farms. In case of experiencing symptoms of flu such as fever and weakening of muscles, it is better to immediately seek medical advice. Pinol says quarantine period in affected areas will stay in the next 90 days. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Employees immediately rushed out of public establishments after an earthquake was felt with the epicenter recorded in Asagbu, Batangas. Pei Palayo will tell us why. Fears was obvious in the faces of employees of different government offices this afternoon when a magnitude 6.3 earthquake rocked Batangas and was felt in Metro Manila. Employees of the Department of Justice and the Senate immediately rushed outside their respective buildings. Members of the media and personnel of the new executive building of Malacanang also did the same. Students of the University of Santo Tomas running to the open field were captured and posted on the Facebook page of Varsitarian. The Philippine National Railways canceled a number of trips this afternoon while its personnel conducted inspections of roads and railways for damages. Some schools in Duzon canceled classes in fear of aftershocks. The earthquake was tectonic in origin with a depth of 160 kilometers. Intensity 4 was felt in Calapan Mindoro, Subic Sambales, Rosario Cavite, Manila City, and Sablayan Occidental Mindoro. 
Intensity 3 in Pateros City, Quezon City, Makati City, Malolos, Bulacan, Caintarizal, and Calamba, Laguna. A lower intensity was felt in Pampanga, Bulacan, and Quezon. Meanwhile, FIVOC says it doesn't expect such an earthquake could cause huge damage due to its depth. The agency clarifies that the earthquake came from separate parts of the West Valley Fault where the third big one might someday occur according to experts. Hindi ito related dun sa magnitude 7.2 na fault na pumabagdas ito sa Metro Manila. Ito po ay uh, related dun sa nagsabdak na plate o oh, nag-fracture nag, uh, uh, na plate along the uh, Manila Trench na po mailalim dito sa, uh, sa Metro Manila. FIVOX expects few aftershocks. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, the Department of National Defense, or DND, is studying the possibility of providing assistance to the, the United States as tension grows between the U.S. and North Korea. Leslie Longboen explains why. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana notes the U.S. can seek assistance from the Philippines in case a war occurs between Washington and the isolated Korean nation. This, although the Philippines will not be directly affected in the event tension gets worse between the U.S. and NOCOR. Despite this, the Department of National Defense or DNE says it will still study if such assistance is under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement or EDCA of the Philippines and the U.S. Oh, they cannot use the EDCA as a uh, pretext to bring in uh, troops or even uh, supplies here. EDCA allows the United States to send military troops to the Philippines to participate in military exercises and to immediately provide aid to the country in times of calamities. However, the U.S. is prohibited from constructing military facilities or bases or to position nuclear weapons in any of the territory of the Philippines. Despite this, the defense official notes there is still a need for the Philippines to prepare for a disaster management plan. Since if North Korea's missile attack to the U.S. military base in Guam misfires, there is a possibility it may hit a Philippine territory. Well, we are watching with concern. Ano nangyayari dyan dahil sa tingin ko hindi naman accurate masyado yung rockets nila. Baka mamaya eh, magkamali, eh, biglang bumagsak. Sabi ng presidente, oh, may bumagsak sa lunita yan. Hindi eh, tayo, masunog tayo dyan. Leslie Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. U.S. and South Korea's top security advisors discuss on North Korea. Meanwhile, Guam residents somewhat anxious but unafraid of North Korean missile threats. Beverly Saison will tell us why. The island's beaches and shopping district in Guam appeared to be buzzing with Korean and Japanese tourists. Some said they were anxious but overall unworried amid missile threats from North Korea. Uh, it's, it's pretty scary, uh, the thought of it. Um, I mean, I know as a person, you know, who lived on Guam like all their life, you still got to worry about what's happening out there. And then at the same time, still go through your daily life, you know, your daily routine. And so you got your worries on top of this whole thing that the island's worrying about and um I uh, they threaten us bring it US strong I'm pretty sure I mean, we got them have fun enjoy the sun so no worries after North Korea disclosed plans to fire missiles over Japan to land near the US Pacific territory of Guam US President Donald Trump said the move would prompt an event the likes of which nobody's seen before Meanwhile, South Korea's Chief of National Security, Chung Wee Yoon, and his U.S. counterpart, H.R. McMaster, reaffirmed close cooperation on North Korean issues during their telephone conversation on Friday, according to South Korea's Presidential Office spokesman, Park Soo Yoon. Yang Chigun, Hanmi Yangugui, Anboa, Kungmini Anjonil, Hakbuhagi Viao, Chihenagal, Tangebel, Chuchie Dehe, Kinmirago, Guam is home to about 163,000 people and a U.S. military base that includes a submarine squadron, an air base, and a Coast Guard group. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue, San Diego, USA. Embassies of the Philippines in Guam, Japan, and South Korea are now preparing for their respected, respective contingency plans for the safety of overseas Filipino workers 
following threats of missile strike from North Korea. Maki Libradilia tells us why. May mga eksperto na nagsasabi ano, na, yun nga, uh, na hindi naman pa ganun ka-credible ang, uh, ang threat. Pero siyempre hindi natin pwedeng ipasawalang bahala yung, yung mga ganitong klaseng uh, tension. This was the statement of the Department of Foreign Affairs in line with the growing threat of missile strike from North Korea in consideration of the safety of Filipinos in neighboring countries Japan, Guam, and South Korea. Embassies of the Philippines in the said countries are now coordinating with officials in their country of assignment as regard the consolidation of contingency plans in case the tension escalates. North Korea's Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un recently threatened to launch a missile strike to Guam, one of the territories of the United States in the Pacific where its military facilities are located. This could obviously affect overseas Filipino workers residing in Guam and also in Japan and South Korea. But DFA assures that the situation in the said countries remain normal and there is nothing to worry about as regards the safety of the Filipinos. Sabi nga nilang konsulado natin, uh, miski yung mga tourist arrivals sa Guam ay patuloy pa rin ang pagdating. Ano? Meanwhile, Department of Labor and Employment Secretary Bellio III says they are willing to open a repatriation program for Filipinos in Guam. So we are just prepared for any eventuality. Kung mayroon mga gusto muwi, we are prepared to help in the repatriation. Uh -huh. Maki Libradilia, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. In other news, the Sandigan Bayan has dismissed the case against Senator Joseph Victor Ejercito. Joyce Balancho tells us why. The Sandigan Bayan 6th Division has acquitted Senator J.V. Ejercito in a case involving the alleged illegal use of public funds filed by the Office of the Ombudsman. The charges stemmed from the Senator's allegedly anomalous use of 2.1 million peso calamity fund of San Juan City to purchase firearms when he was still the mayor. In a decision released by the Antigraph Court yesterday, the Sandigan Bayan 6th Division explained it ruled in favor of Senators demurrer to evidence, which sought to dismiss the case filed against him due to lack of evidence. The Sandigan Bayan said the prosecution failed to prove his guilt beyond reasonable doubt. Aside from Senator Ejercito, the Antigraph Court also acquits his 14 co-accused, who are former city councilors, including former San Juan City Vice Mayor Francis Zamora. Alongside the acquittal is the lifting of the whole departure order against them. In a statement, Senator Ejercito has thanked the Sandigan Bayan for what he describes as upholding justice and fairness in the trial of his case. The senator is also glad that his name has already been cleared, further noting it proves he did not make a mistake in trusting the country's judicial system. Joyce Balancho, UNTV News and Rescue, Sandigan Bayan. Senator Gregorio Honasan II voluntarily surrendered today to the Binian City Police in Laguna. This was after the Sandigan Bayan 2nd Division issued a warrant of arrest against the senator over a graft case in connection with his allegedly anomalous use of his 30 million peso pork barrel fund in 2012. After the booking procedure, the, pol the police accompanied Honasan to the Regional Trial Court Branch 25 under Judge Teodoro Solis to post a bail worth 60,000 pesos. Pagkatapos ng uh, booking procedure, uh, dinala na namin sila sa, ano, sa court. At uh, yung court naman, nag-issue ng, uh, after nung na-approve yung kanyang uh, bail bond, nag-issue uh, ng release order yung uh, judge. At uh, ang sabi nung uh, judge, uh, yung release order will be delivered to the Sandigan within the day para ma-inform din yung Sandigan Bayan na nag-post ng bail at saka na-issue na yung release orders. In a statement, Honasan stood firm that of his innocence in the cases filed against him and that he will continue to fight to prove that the allegations against him are false. The anti-graph court is set to release a verdict on the senator's case on September 22. One Pac-Man party list representative Michael Odilon Romero tops the list of the richest members of the lower house of Congress. However, Romero is now in hiding. Grace Cassian tells us why. 
Congressman Michael Odelon Romero of Juan Pacman Party List Asset reaches more than 7 billion pesos based on the 2016 Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or SALEN released by the House of Representatives. This made him the richest lawmaker in the history of Congress. Romero has not yet appeared in any congressional session since this year after the Manila Regional Trial Court released an arrest warrant against him over a 3.4 million peso qualified theft case. Next to Romero with the biggest asset is Diwa Party List Representative Emeline Aglipay Villar, the wife of Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar. Other considerably rich lawmakers include Negros Oriental Representative Alfredo Benitez, Ilocos Norte Representative Imelda Marcos, and Quezon City Representative Feliciano Belmonte Jr. Ninth in the list of the richest Solon is the top contributor of President Rodrigo Duterte, Davao del Norte Representative Antonio Floirendo Jr., while House Speaker Pantalon Alvarez is on the 50th spot. The poorest House member based on Sal and is Kabataan Party List Representative Sara Elago with an asset of only 50,000 pesos. All employees and officials of the government are required to submit their Sal N. Those who fail to correctly declare their assets will face charges. An example is the case of former Chief Justice Renato Corona, who was impeached for misdeclaring his real properties and riches in his sal end. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Next on Y News. Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido to lead investigation against cops linked to the Parahinogs in Ozamis City. Former Customs Chief Rufi Biazon suggests measures towards effective inspection of shipments and containers in ports. And the government ensures proper psychosocial services are provided for displaced residents of Marawi City. Y News will be right back. Residents of Ozamis City are asking for Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido to stay as they fear the possible retaliation of the Parohinos. Monhokson tells us why. Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido was tasked to investigate against cops suspected to have been protecting the Parohinog clan in Ozamis City. This is in connection with President Rodrigo Duterte's order to held liable all policemen who have been covering up the illegal activities of the Parohino clan. We will backtrack on how many decades, how many years were they, itong grupo na to. They were the one conducting all these uh, other activities there, di ba? So titingnan natin uh, sino-sino yung posibleng na-involved. Na the said cops serves as hitman of the Parohinog to execute the killing of civilians. The PNP also confirmed that the said cops are members of the Parohinog death squad. Meron pa yan. Titingnan natin, sino ba? Sin Kasi atin atitingnan, nung na-assign ka ba dyan, nung mga panahon na yon na sila ang mga leader-leader dyan o namamayagpag, ano yung mga possible participation mo? So we will backtrack. Uh, now, if there's an intelligence report, uh, then that, that, that report will be included kung sino itong mga uh, personnel that were involved in the past. Due to insisting demand from Ozamis City residents, PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa has decided not to send Espinido to other areas of assignment but to stay in Ozamis City. De La Rosa explains in a statement that residents of Ozamas City are growing afraid of the possible retaliation from the Parohinogs and the PNP chief believes it is better for Espinido to stay. De La Rosa adds they already have leads about the suspected cops linked to the Parohinog. The PNP is now conducting thorough investigation to confirm their involvement with the clan. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krami.
The Osami City Regional Trial Court did not allow the Parohinog siblings to attend the burial of their father in Osami City. Nel Maribuho will tell us why. Nova Princess and Reynaldo Parujinok Jr. failed to convince the Regional Trial Court or RTC of Osami City to allow them to attend the burial of their parents and siblings on Monday. Judge Edmundo Pintak of the RTC Branch 15 says it's difficult for him to reject the siblings' request. However, he notes the welfare of many should always prevail. Purity of the abuse. That's the primary concern. And that's why the court... The Osamis police, meanwhile, claims receiving information that the supporters and sympathizers of the Parujinogs are planning to retaliate. On the part of the PNP, we opposed the same motion because uh, we received intelligence reports. Uh, there is a plan of rescue and there is also a sightings of kind of uh, armed men coming from Lanar del Norte and there are also reports of consolidation from the supporters uh, or the sympathizers. So yun ang kinoconsider natin na, na it would be a risk kung dadalo pa sila sa living. The relatives of the Parujinogs have no other choice but to accept the court's decision. Ire-report namin ito sa uh, mga attorneys ka. Siguro nakapalibing na lang din ako. Medyo uh, emotional po kayo. Okay lang. Okay lang. Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido initially stated that he is not against allowing the Parujinog siblings to attend the burial of their loved ones. Kung ako lang ang tatanungin, uh, ipapa, uwiin ko kasi humanitarian reason naman, no, papa niya, mahal sa buhay na yung, yung nawala, dapat pa, 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 maski for last chance lang ba na uh, makatingin siya sa uh, mahal niya sa buhay. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Customs authorities see the need to replace the x-ray scanners at the port of Manila. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. At least 10,000 containers pass through the Bureau of Customs every day. Because of this volume, BOC admits it is impossible to conduct physical inspection and verification on each of the containers. In today's episode of the program, Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, Muntinlupa Representative Rufi Biazon suggests that the BOC should have pre-shipment inspections. This requires inspection of all shipments right upon arrival in port before loading them to containers. Kasi sa ating ngayon, sa current system, bulag tayo eh. Darating yung container van, wala tayong idea kung ano talaga laman except yung deklarasyon ng, uh, ng, ng importer. Mm -hmm. Hindi rin naman lahat sinasubject to 100% inspection. Biasun believes there is a need to install additional X-ray machines in the premises of BOC. However, the space in the bureau is limited. Kasi sa ngayon, yung X-ray is a standalone unit. Mm -hmm. Ang nakakakita lang noon real time, yung operator mismo. So pwede din yung operator magbulag-bulagan. Oh, exactly. Oh, parang ah, so, ang, 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 ang proposal namin noon, pag in-upgrade yung computer system ng customs clearance system, naka-online yung x-ray so that meron siyang oversight. Biason sees one solution to the problem is to dissolve the POC and create a new agency. He believes somebody has to be held liable in the ongoing controversy of shipment of illegal drugs into the country. Nevertheless, Biason believes the issue is not enough reason to remove Commissioner Nicanor Feldon from office. Ikaw ba, will you support yung call ng ibang mga kasama mong kongresista na pag-resignin si Feldon? No, I don't join the call for a resignation. I've never, I've never believed in calling for someone's resignation unless meron ka talagang solid evidence of mm -hmm. wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. At this point sa akin, wala akong nakikita pa na solid evidence that ano, no, na si Commissioner Fildon consciously allowed uh, drugs to come in. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, personnel of the Bureau of Customs recently seized 30 units of iPhone 7 Plus at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 1. The items placed inside a black plastic bag has an estimated value of 1.35 million pesos. 
They were declared under the name Su Makiao, a Chinese national who took Xiamen Airlines flight MF-819 with an arrival date of August 9, 2017. Miakiao violated Customs Modernization and Tariff Act and the NTC regulation for brining in Apple smartphones without the necessary permit. The iPhone units are currently stalled inside the in-bind room at Naia Terminal 1. And the Presidential Commission on Good Government, or PCGG, begins probe on Comlec Chairman Andres Bautista for possible violations during his term as PCGG Chair. Roderick Mendoza tells us why. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre has confirmed that Comelec Chairman Andres Bautista is now under investigation for his possible violations when he was the chairman of the Presidential Commission on Good Government. Bautista served as PCGG chief from 2010 to 2015 before he was appointed to the Comelec. Aguirre says he already talked with PCGG commissioners and documents were given to him. Uh, yung mga possible uh violation of anti-graph, yung mga commissions uh, on referred cases, yung mga possible na ghost employees, at saka maraming mga possible travel violations not in accordance with uh, the administrative procedure. He says they may have a report on this by next week. It could also be used as evidence to unseat Bautista. If there is an impeachment case, then dun maaaring i-file yan as an evidence during the impeachment trial. Aguirre further said investigations on Bautista will continue even if he steps down from office. The NBI is conducting a separate probe on Bautista for his alleged unexplained wealth. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. In other news, Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon believes that the 24-member Constitutional Commission is just a study group, therefore it has no authority to amend the Constitution. Nel Maribuho explains why. Walang kapangyarihan ang Constitutional Commission na mag-amend ng saligang batas. Ang may kapangyarihan ang Kongreso sa pamagitan ng CONAS constitutional conventions. This was the statement of Senate Minority Floor Leader Franklin Trilon on the issue of amending the Constitution as suggested by President Rodrigo Duterte. The President wants to create a constitutional commission composed of 24 members because the Chief Executive believes a constitutional convention will cost the government billions of pesos. Magastos talaga ang constitutional convention. Now do not tell me that the composition of that const uh, constitutional body would be wiser, would be more honest, walang pinoprotektahan or vested interest. Drilon explains CONCOM is only a recommendatory body and its recommendations will still undergo Congress debates. But according to Malacanang, the leadership of Congress has already expressed support to the creation of a constitutional body who will draft the amendments. The President and the leaders of Congress have expressed support for a constitutional commission to assist in drafting amendments, and several groups have already been conducting research on for and fora on federalism, uh, presidential and parliamentary system. The proposed amendment in the Constitution by a constituent assembly is now progressing in the lower house. Congress is likely to convene as CONAS in 2018. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Reports on the recent reclamation activities of China in the South China Sea is likely to be discussed in the next summit of ASEAN member states. Rosalie Koss tells us why. The Washington-based think tank Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative reports that China continues its reclamation activities in Paracel Islands. Based on its article posted on August 9, structures, infrastructures, and facilities have been built in three North and Middle Islands. AMTI said China has been intensifying its military capabilities in the Paracel Islands. Meanwhile, Malacanang said these reports have to be verified. It would be best if this uh, apparent evidence can be vetted for accuracy. 
if only to preserve the trust and confidence that all disputants over the territory in South China Sea, South China, West Philippine, North Natuna Seas need to have each to have in each other going forward. Abelia believes the issue must be tackled in the next ASEAN summit. The continuing reclamation and militarization of disputed territory in these waters, if the report and photos from a Washington-based think tank are accurate, these can be taken up in ASEAN by the ASEAN in future discussions. The presidential spokesperson also explains the recent statement of Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Caetano that there was no mention in the ASEAN joint communique on the reclamation and militarization in the South China Sea because China, he said, is allegedly not reclaiming anymore. He made that statement in context of Philippine claims. Okay, not within Philippines. Wala, wala, wala nire-reclaim ang China regarding matters pertaining to us. Okay? Para, patungod sa atin. So, pero kung mga, yung, yung katulad ng mga bang mga developments, uh, that will have to be taken up on the future ASEAN uh, discussions. Rosa Lecoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Of National Defense or DND will ask for additional funds from Congress in the House of Budget Deliberation next week. Joe Anano tells us why. The ongoing battle in Marawi City has cost the armed forces of the Philippines almost 3 billion pesos. This is why the Department of National Defense will ask for additional budget from Congress for next year. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana explains the additional fund will be allocated for intelligence gathering and for the purchase of more equipment. Kailangan pa natin malaking pira siguro to develop our human intelligence on the ground kasi kailangan natin yun eh. Kung wala tayo nun, mahirap. The Defense Department says it would be a huge help in identifying terrorists. The DND also plans to purchase high-quality drones that can be used in day and night operations. The Defense Secretary also notes the need to replace the almost 3 billion pesos amount spent for the Marawi battle, which was supposed to be used for other military projects. The Army, I think, they have already spent uh, about 1.3 billion. Na. So, Army pa lang yun. So, hindi pa kasama yung Air Force, uh, the Marines, nandun, nandun din. So, let's say siguro, mga roughly, mga ang nagagastos natin dyan since the start is about maybe... 2.5 billion, 2.5 to 3 billion na. The Defense Secretary also confirms that the operations in the conflict-torn city might take another two months to end. Tinanong namin na stwik yung mga tao doon, sabi ng mga tropa, ng mga commander, sabi ng mga one or two months na lang. Matagal-tagal pa rin, pero sabi ng ating Presidente, okay magmadali dahil pagkalag na madali kayo, na marami na mamatay sa inyo eh. In the 82nd day of the battle, the military has already killed 552 Maute terrorists. While 128 died on the part of government troops, 45 civilians had already died due to the battle. Joe Anano, UNCV News and Rescue, Philippines. The government is making sure that internally displaced persons in Marawi City are provided with proper psychosocial services amid the ongoing conflict. Rosa Ligos will tell us why. The Office of the Civil Defense maintains there's no reason to be alarmed over the conditions of evacuees in Marawi City. This is what the agency assured after receiving reports that some internally displaced persons or IDPs are now suffering from mental health crisis. IDPs have been staying outside their residences for almost three months because of the ongoing battle in Marawi City. The official also says they are providing the necessary aid for the affected residents. And the provision of mental health and psychosocial services, including necessary medicines, are continuously being provided to our IDP. Based on reports, approximately 30,000 IDPs have been given psychosocial services, such as psychological first aid, stress debriefing, and psychiatric treatments. However, the OCD has no particular number about how many are suffering from mental illness and needing higher level of medical intervention. Ross Alicoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Coming up on Y News, German authorities test eggs amid contamination scandal.
Qatar waives visas for 80 nationalities amid Gulf boycott. And be inspired by a German man who swims to work to beat traffic congestion. More from Y News after this break. Wishcovery pre-qualifier from Rizal is full of hope as he joins the competition. Leslie Longboen will tell us why. Sa music po kasi, ina-express mo po yung feeling mo eh. Na la lahat po nang hindi mo kayang sabihin vocally, pwede mo pong kantahin. Nineteen-year-old Mike John Lloyd Villamor has been in love with music since his elementary days, showing his fondness in music in different events and joining a number of contests. This he does not only because of his passion, but also to earn money to help his father. His father, who is a tricycle driver, cannot provide all the needs of the family, so Mike and his sister were forced to stop schooling. Gusto pong pag-aralin niyo, ate ko. Gusto pong magbigyan ng bahay po yung mga magulang ko. Gusto rin pong makapagtapos. Mike is so thankful to be chosen as one of Wishcovery's pre-qualifiers as he considers the talent search as a great opportunity. He promised himself to give his all in the competition for his desire to pursue a music career and most importantly, college education. Leslie Longmowen, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Of course, Will, I just had to ask, where were you during the Manila Trench earthquake? Um, actually, I was on the road, so I didn't really feel it. Uh, but uh, I was uh, traveling from the hardware back to the office. Did you hear about it with, uh, from any of your employees? Yes. I did check with the office uh, after I heard was it, it on felt the news. around the yeah, it was um, in Makati. It was felt a little, but um, it's just like kind of you have a little vertigo, so it's uh, neither here. How about you, Darlene? Were you in Cavite? No, I was actually here at the office. I was mm. writing the news. <laughs> did you yeah. feel it? Sort of. Sort How about of. you, Jago? Those are the reasons behind the news. August 11, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro the third. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why? News.